comics, you have to add. You have a blank page and you have to add things to that page. And so there's a degree where you're like, well, this is just enough. It is good enough to convey the idea. However, movies, if you have to, it's the opposite, that you have real objects and people around you. So then you have to uh, select, you know, how much you put in or take out in order to make that scene. Do I declutter from here? Hello everyone, my name is Mar and I founded the animation studio in Japan and we uh, talk about in animation industry topics or like media, film, things around that. Actually today we will talk with our first guest of the year. It's Ken Nimura, he's an illustration, illustrator and cartoonist. Great person, great artist. Ken is author of books like this one. It's uh, never open it, uh, the Taboo Trilogy, and I love this one. Today we'll talk more about the another one, but super recommended. Today especially we'll talk about this one. It says, I Kill Giants. Um, and this comic, it's especially interesting because of today's topic, because after working in this comic, there was a, an adaptation in live action, and today we will talk about adaptations. Hey, back, good to be back. Hi. So, uh, we've been talking a bit about the, your experience of the comic to uh, the movie adaptation. And I wanted to talk a bit more about obstacles from adapting a comic book to like real people. I can just like, I have things to say because I have lots of opinions, but do you have something that comes to mind when you think like obstacles? Hmm. Like, what, what's different? I mean, it's a different media. And, um, and so, although. For example, one thing that's really good about a writer is that, you know, that same person could, like, let's say, write the script for a comic or a novel and then be involved in a movie, uh, which means that, you know, the, the same idea, he, he's able to turn it into, like, different um, things. <laughs> so the, the core uh, message, hopefully, doesn't change along the, the different media. But, you know, same things might have to be said in different ways because it's just different languages. Yeah. Uh, so for us, for example, in I Give Giants, like we had one tiny, one, one specific thing that, you know, might apply here is that uh, there's an there's a element of fancy in the, in the comic. And so there are giants and, you know, um, creatures that appear. But among all the creatures yes. uh, in the comic, there are uh, fairies that appear. And yes, so, the fairies. Yeah, the fa fairies don't <laughs> appear in the movie. And that was because, yeah. like, we... I'm going to try to remember the whole conversation, but it, it was more about, like, the whole movie and, and comic, too, plays with the idea of, like, are these... these uh, is this fantasy world or this world besides uh, the, the real world? Is it real or is it imagined? And it could yes. be either way, um, because it's a it's a fiction work, uh, work of fiction. Yeah. However, it could have worked. It could have worked. Yeah, and so I think in the in the comic, like we could get away with putting small fairies mm -hmm. in certain scenes, and that wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't make us question. It would work both for you know, that those fairies being real or not real, but yeah. in a movie, we I forgot like there were a couple of scenes where. If we included the fairies, we would be implying that the, you know, fantasy world was real, and so that would yes. be working against, uh, you know, that play that we have. Yeah, like that 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 question that you're having during the whole movie, like, is this real or not? Like, yeah. to which degree does the fantasy exist or not? Yeah. So we had to take them so, away because of that, because like, they just would too work. much fantasy. Yeah, it would work in a comic. It wouldn't work in a in a movie. You know, you could say the opposite, which is like. May, something we see, I'm thinking about like, for example, like, you know, uh, TV show adaptations of comics and maybe when they're like too literal, like it's exactly the same words that you, you saw on the, on the comic as a, as a show, TV show, it yeah. doesn't feel natural. Yes. So yes. there are things that I so think... So people in real life doesn't speak like that or don't dress like that. Like there are so many, that's something I wanted to mention that some things that you get away in one medium, you cannot bring it to the rest. Yeah. You have to even change like the plot. Like, I don't know, like maybe this character needs to be older because it won't feel real. Yeah. 
if the character is like young or something like that, for example, like you have to change like big things, like big lines. Yeah. And, and big designs like that. I don't know, like even for some of the acting, like there in the case of specifically comics, or because it's a medium where there is no movement as such, yeah. you have to suggest that movement. And so that means that sometimes you have to to maybe uh, a kind of acting that works as a comic, but it's not real, real. And so when you have a yeah. real actor doing that same or movement... you have to exaggerate in the comic, or yeah. maybe in the actor can do like a one second little twitch on the eye roll. Yeah. That already says the thing. But in the comic, you can have like three drawings with before the movement, the movement, and then the movement. You will feel strength. Exactly. And so I guess there, or, or for example, there is this other thing where um, I remember specifically like a friend of mine, she had, a, it was in Japan, but she had a real live TV show adaptation of one of her mangas. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they found out while doing the production was that um for each chapter of the show, tv show they would be using the content for two chapters of the manga so they would be just yes. publishing twice as fast well, not yes. publishing, but producing twice yes. as fast so you know there's a density i would say that works as a manga chapter but that's different from you know what you expect to be um i don't know a meaningful tv show or or one that's exactly. satisfying exactly so and it's also about the genre as well because for example in these in i kill giants i would say that sometimes you would have to make like a very scary drawing in one page to, for things to work like in the terror aspect but then in the in the in the show in the movie you just need to have long time yeah. if you hold something for long enough it creates enough tension that it doesn't have to even look scary yeah just having that control of the time yeah brings you the feeling yeah 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 i think for example like so, horror or horror is one of the most like difficult just things. tension in general yeah. it doesn't even have to be exactly horror. so you can do horror i think in movies but i i think horror in comics is much more difficult and so in comics it yes. works much more in the sense of what you're saying is that you're creating tension you're creating maybe discomfort but it's very difficult to make like a scary jump in a comic yeah, I, I guess it, for me, sometimes like the biggest difference is that at least the way I do comics is yeah. I'm not thinking that much about like what I'm putting on the page. Like, is this a nice drawing or details or anything? I'm always thinking about like, how is this going to... I'm, I'm always thinking about like, how I'm painting images in the reader's minds. So it's more about like not what you have on the page, but what you have on the page, what, what images are what you have on the page creating on the reader's minds. And sometimes you don't need that much to create the, the appropriate like image or suggest the idea to a reader. And so comics, you have to add. You have a blank page and you have to add things yeah. to that page. And so mm -hmm. there's a degree where you're like, well, this is just enough. It is good enough to convey the idea. However, movies, if you have to, it's the opposite. Like you have real objects and people around you. So then you have to, uh, select, you know, how much you put in or take out in order to make that have, Like, do, you, do I declutter from here? Yeah. Like, so do I keep adding layers? Exactly. It's a very different process. In, in comics, you can, you could at one point be like, well, I need a character who lives in a house that has this shape and it just takes as much time to draw as, you know, any other house, for example. In a movie, you would be like, okay, so how do I build this set? To make it so that yeah, it makes you sense. Don't start, you don't start from zero as much unless, as you say, like you're actually building a set. Yeah. Like, I don't know, like in an empty room. Uh, at the same time, sometimes I'm very, you know, the, the good thing about maybe having the things in front of you is that if you have a camera, then that allows you to improvise much more and be like, okay, so what if I put the camera here or there? And that can lead to, you know, maybe things that you don't, you didn't plan for but you know that are yeah, good like the happy accidents if that makes sense totally yeah or even bringing creativity from other like because you have more people in the team yeah exactly. uh, there's things more things you cannot control but also they can bring in very nice yeah. details that you can you didn't even think about yeah so in you know one media you're adding and in the other you're subtracting basically and so that's a very different process yeah comics sometimes get you know some people might call them like or, you know, sometimes are being called as, you know, 
how you will poor people's cinema or something like that. Uh, yeah. And yeah. and there's certainly like a way to approach comics as if they were cinema, like nothing bad about it. And I don't care much about that label, but like, it's just to say, like, even if you approach it that way, you're going to be making different choices because it's you're, you're adding something to the picture and not taking it out, if anything. So yeah, they oftentimes look like, you know, distant cousins, but they're, quite separate in, in many ways. They are very close in other ways, for sure. But. Uh, it's interesting because when I started my webcomic, I always wanted to do animation. So I did my webcomic in a format that was like horizontal mm. panels. All the panels are mm. the same size. Mm. It's like the movie. Like imagine you turn your phone and just like slide, 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 slide. You're watching like a storyboard mm. sort of like comic. The thing is when I turn that comic into a short film, yeah. which I did later when I was like studying animation and so on, I had to take out because in the page I would add a lot of details, mm. like the clothing and everything. But then when you have to animate it, you have to move those characters. Oh, yeah. You have a budget and a limited time, and you have to simplify. Yeah, yeah, that's something. It, it's funny, like oftentimes people here in Japan complain about how anime has gotten so much more complex over the years. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, I mean, maybe going back a little bit to like the thing of like you know work conditions, but like <laughs> people were being paid the same rate as they were being paid maybe 30 years ago but the the, the amount of details that the anime has right now is much more uh much higher than it used to be right uh so that's just making more you know adding some stress to certain labor certain people but i do like very much uh the anime from the 1760s when they had less means here and they had to like go for very like simplified designs and very sharp and very distinct designs and you know that would mean yeah. um that i mean that the i mean for the, the the extreme example would be hayao miyazaki ha comes from that tradition although yes. in the latter later years because he has a budget, bigger budget he's able to make much more detailed yeah. uh work but he comes from that tradition of like making something in a very very sim simple way and yeah. that's i love that so much um, and I tried to actually read. there's studios that would purposefully do that so for example studio Chizu movies uh, hmm. I would say that they barely use shadows for the characters for example like the highlights in the hair like yeah little lines and then you focus on the movement yeah exactly and that again like maybe I if works. you adapt that character design into a live action movie it doesn't work you know it's too simple but for animation as long as you know the the design is distinct and but as you say, like basically the character moves or act in a way that feels alive, then then sometimes it's more than you, enough, you know. To, to as long as you're in, in, you can get inside the story and you're like transmitting the message, like yeah. you're getting there. It doesn't yeah. have to have lots of lesson than details. It's more like a stylistic choice. Yeah. And also what we bring, like movies will bring also yeah. the time we were talking about and they will also bring sound. It is very interesting. Like, how did it feel, for example, seeing your characters speaking, like their voices? That was very how was weird. That? that was very weird <laughs> because uh, it was always meant to be like a, you know, something that just happens in your head. So, uh, yeah, yeah, but even them, I mean, seeing them in the in the movie set and then going through the lines and being like, no, I'm going to change this, you know, add a pause here or, you know, change the dialogue. And you know they were uh, so they were doing that work of like okay this thing that I have on on I mean although it was a script but it's like okay would a real person say this in this way right so yeah. um yeah there are many many small you know adaptations um and I'm thinking about sorry maybe I'm I'm going into a different direction but like I've rewatched uh, yesterday uh June the the latest mm -hmm. movie adaptation. Uh, because he, he was in the cinemas here again and um, I love that movie and I think it's impressive at all levels like visually, script, uh, music, everything it just works, it's a huge spectacle and it's amazing to a point where at one point I just turn off my creator mind and just get into a movie which is wild, you know, a very difficult thing sometimes for me to happen like I might always be like analyzing what's going on I know and, yes. and 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 then sometimes you know some some you know a person well in this case like Denis Villeneuve like he's such a good uh storyteller they just forget about it about it yeah. uh and I'm just remembering like there's uh one story uh I listened to a podcast I think it was or 
or maybe read an interview to one person working on on June, uh, the first movie. As a, I don't know if that person was doing props or they were doing uh, costume design or one of the two things. And the one thing that they were mentioning that was very interesting was that apparently when they were being sent the instructions on like, you know, this is what you have to build, like either a costume or, you know, an object. Like everyone was very, sus- they, they, they didn't trust much the, the Navy in that. They were like, this thing, this person is asking me to build doesn't work or it's a yeah. compete or there, there was something that they were they weren't feeling as they done yeah and but they made it they were like well these are the instructions they discussed and they were like well, well we're just gonna make it as as being told and apparently uh it was only when they watched the final movie that they understood everything and they were like oh okay so this has this specific design because it works in this environment in this scene that's shown in this way and it totally made sense. Yeah. And apparently, like, that's when they, they got it. But, like, I really admire that from, you know, in the case of cinema, because it's when it, it's a big movie like that one, uh, it's a big enterprise. And, you know, being able to direct, you know, that ship, if you may, yeah. and give very yes. specific instructions, even though, you know, the instructions separately don't make much sense when you put everything together, suddenly you you know there is a vision behind, behind right. right and and it's such a polished vision that at one point you just forget you're watching a movie and you're inside the the, the story right and yeah it's very very inspiring to watch something like that i was i think it was the, it was probably the third time i watched a movie and and i was just as you know enthralled by everything as that's the fantastic first. i was that's great fantastic. but it's it's very interesting seeing how you know small parts uh you know when i don't know manage properly you know they can become like one single whole um cohesive you know thing yeah so. and yeah it felt good to watch something like that because like it's it's good to know that you know i don't know like regardless the uh the scope of the project like if you have somebody behind who has a very clear vision it can really go somewhere and you know if if we're talking about you know how you know, the different, like, difficulties that we found while making Ike Giants, which was, you know, such a smart, much more smaller movie than Dune. Like, I can't even think about it, you know, what it, had, what it would, would have been to make that other movie, yeah. right? So uh, to maybe be able to finish it and for that movie to even be good, it's just, it's a miracle, basically. Right. And so, even if the result's yeah, not good, let's say <laughs> you do something and it's not good, well, you know, you hopefully you've learned something hopefully you, hopefully you've enjoyed the process uh and hopefully you can apply that for the next thing you do but... yeah, and you don't have to do a masterpiece at each st- like drawing or uh whatever item you're creating as well so hmm. i think there's a very good uh ending section to talk about uh like to thank you for coming no thank you and to like where can we find you online or there's some project or there's some message you want to tell us like before uh, leaving what's the what's the thing that you want people to hmm. do uh, after this talk sure read so contracts people, <laughs> other than the tweet. people can <laughs> find me i'm pretty much everywhere twitter instagram uh, it's for the most part always i like can under bar Nimura, at whatever mm-hmm. And uh, so there I am. I'm not very, I haven't been very active for a couple of months because I'm working on something and I'm just working on taking time for myself, which has been great. I'm, I'm going to be putting out something at one point. But yeah, if anything, I'm just taking some time for, for myself, which is something that, you know, uh, nothing to do with anything we've talked about here. But it's like, I think that, again, it's important to, uh, I need it some time. So I'm just... Managing it's to part get... of the process. Resting is part of the process. People don't feel guilty. Yeah, and um, take time for you. I think in time for yourself can also work in a hobby. It doesn't even have to be resting on a bed. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You... And I think you know, I haven't done that in a while, and it just it's just feeling good. And I don't know where that's leading to. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing some work on the sides, but uh, yeah, it's just like you know, some me time, which has been great. And um, um, so yeah, we'll see. Thank you guys for your time. So you heard him. Uh, he's on all the socials. At some point, he may revive or not. He will rest and keep creating. Well, he's, he's yeah. happy. <laughs> and if not, like he has a lot of published works that 
please check. Like, actually, my we talk about I Kill Giants, but so far my favorite is this one. Yeah, you never open it. Yeah, it's good. check it out. It's, I love um, it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I'll, I'll say nothing about it. Just check it. Things and hopefully you know people will enjoy them. Yeah. So, bye again. Okay, talk to you soon. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye bye.